doing welcome stuff. everyone we're gonna start <laughs> talking about astro boy episode one eventually um as always spoilers lie ahead this is part of our new program where we are digging into classic anime talking about some of the really um foundational anime out there particularly this one right here astro boy 1963 arguably the first anime depending on how kind of how you define it um and also importantly episode one is the story of astro's birth so let's talk about that had you guys seen any of these episodes before tonight or before this week yes actually only the first one i did not see the okay. the, the next two yeah. I only saw the part uh, of where he's in his uh, s- supersonic car. Yeah, <laughs> as, as the example of like how to make something look like it has a it, it's moving at a great speed mm. as like that technique for mm. limited animation style. So that's the only part I've ever seen of this. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's uh, <clears throat> yeah. It's interesting going back and watching this and looking at the animation to that point. Because boy, they're trying hard with a, not a lot of resources. Yeah, I, I think the the one of the first things I realized here is just how limited the animation is. Um, like it's it's really really obvious that they're they're they barely can like make things move. Um, and, like there's a lot of things like there's the shot of the street where it's literally just kind of moving the camera around this background. Yeah, um, with very little actual movement on screen. Um, uh, these shots of the horrified uh, uh, folks, but it's still the scene, and I, I show this scene a lot in my history of anime panels. Um, but the the car crash where Aster Boynton, and we'll get to this in a second, um, but the, the the boy gets killed in a car crash, um, and then his uh, his father comes to take him away. It's still just a, a I think a really strong visual you know image scene. Um, the scene still just kind of hits me pretty hard. And yet it's done with not a lot of movement. No. Right. I mean, it, it, it conveys so much in the still image and the, just the camera work that it's mm-hmm. like you can get, you can convey so much there and you're not having people literally moving around and crying and pulling yeah. out, you know, handkerchiefs and stuff. It's like, nope, mm-hmm. just, you've got it right there. You don't have to animate any part of it until you mm-hmm. get to the do- good doctor and his former <laughs> yes. son. Um, <laughs> the corpse of a son. Like, uh, yeah. The good doctor. Yeah. <laughs> think, yeah. He was good. A good doctor up yes. to a point. He, he seemed fine up to this point, and then um, not so much. <laughs> Things went sideways. <laughs> yeah. The pressure well, was on. He was, he was tired. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, it's it's kind of funny. You know, you, you not funny, but when mm-hmm. you're watching this opening sequence mm. and you know you're you know that you're watching the first episode of astro boy and how mm. astro boy came into being and this that and the other thing and it's literally death yeah like like in the first like what 60 seconds yeah if that mm. you know death and you know just the horror of it and and you know even though there's it's very still imagey mm. not very not a whole lot of animation but you know as the people just kind of sitting there look, is looking down sad and then his father of all people showing up, I'm just like, mm-hmm. what are the odds of the father showing up right <laughs> at, the, at the car scene? Yeah. But, but anyway, but you know, just, you know, just having him going, my boy, my boy. Mm-hmm. Now, if I was like 10 years old or eight years old or mm-hmm. five or whatever, I'd probably be going, um, uh, he's okay. Right. The boy's okay. <laughs> yeah. He's just sleeping. He's taking a nap. Right. Mm-hmm. But no. it's just, but no, I mean, and yeah. they cut, but that's the thing is that, they cut to the chase really quick. They were like, "We're going to get the yeah. thing done, and then we're going to move forward." And, yeah, and then well, you're not going to over animate it if you have a limited budget. So it's like right. you need to right. get to the plot point. He's yeah. dead. Right. Now we move on. <laughs> right, and it, it's a very stark sequence. Like, there's no, no music. Yeah. It's just you know the, the narrator stops speaking. It's just you hear the sirens. You see the thing. You know, you you push in on Doctor Tenma um, and uh, and the lifeless body of his preteen son. son. Um, and I, I would, I don't know for sure, mm. but I would, I would go so far as to to hazard this statement. Mm. This is probably the first example of truck kun in anime. Yeah, probably. Yeah, probably mm-hmm. right yeah. here. 
right here. This this moment in time, 1963, <laughs> Truck could make grand explain. appearance. In this thing. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, ha! Because uh, Tesma, uh, sorry, Tenma gets his idea um, and decides to, to go off and pr- proceeds to laugh hysterically, which you know is a bad sign. Yeah. He's a little unhinged. A um, <laughs> little bit. Um, and then they proceed to to build Astro Boy. And what's interesting is how, like, this whole sequence of, of, of building him, um, I had forgotten how much, or I hadn't realized how much humor there is in a lot of these sort of connecting scenes yeah. of the various char- characters doing things and checking things. And, like, this, uh, this, this guy's head uh, bobs up and down as the readings go up and down. Um and they add this very sort of Looney Tunes esque humor to a lot of these sort of connecting yeah. scenes, um, which I actually While like a lot. Still keeping it very limited in what yeah. what's going on, so the gauges mm-hmm. go up and down, his head goes up and down, but mm-hmm. like most of the rest of him isn't doing anything. You know, yeah, you know it's I mean? just yeah, they're literally just <laughs> sliding that up and down. Well, how about the one with the guy sitting at the at the gauges, and you just see his head back and, and forth, yeah, back, and forth, back and forth, in a circle, and it's like that's it. It's like his yeah. body, rest of it doesn't move. It's just very s- specific pieces of things mm-hmm. that have to move. Yeah. Like, uh. that, that is one of the interesting things is that, like, in a lot of this, like, it's not even technically animation. It's just, you know, like three different drawings that they're cutting between rapidly right. yeah. to get across that idea of movement. Um, um, but yes, they, 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 they uh, build Astro Boy um, to classical music. Yes. Yeah, yeah, it's still like Phantom of the Opera at that moment where oh, it's yeah, just kind of like, ha, 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 bah, 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 bah. like, here we go. Yeah, I love um, how he looks like a rooster. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's intentional, much more pronounced. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, you might um, say he's a bit cocky. <laughs> 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 um, this 1963 reminded me of as a kid, I had gotten a chance to see and I had recorded on VHS. Um, <clears throat> Alvin and the Chipmunks from around the oh, same period okay, of time. Yeah. And it is almost exactly the same kind of oh, thing. Oh, interesting. It's yeah. in black and white. It's got very limited animation budget and very, therefore, very limited animation. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's like, it just, it was so strange to see it. I'd be like, wow, talk about it like a very, you know, similar approach to something mm-hmm. on different mm-hmm. sides of the Pacific. Yeah. I'm like, interesting. Mm-hmm. Well, it, limited animation was a really big thing. Um, you know, UPA, United Pictures Artists, I think, uh, was a uh, an animation studio started specifically to make limited animation for television to say, hey, this is a specific approach we're going to take visually, not just because it's cheap. In fact, it wasn't cheap. Um, it was about the same budget as as other animation at the time. But like, we can we can do this in a way that can uh, allow us to to make um, a lot more, you know, um, animation more quickly. Um, it was very much a, a visual choice, um, uh, and yeah, it, it was it was very much the kind of the rage at the time. Um, and uh, and Astro Boy wakes up, right? Takes his first steps. Takes his first steps. Figure it out. He tries to figure and, it out, and we get this really interesting visual of Astro just kind of very stiffly walking over to Tenma. And then kind of collapsing in his arms, and this very kind of human image, human element of Tenma, while Astro still being just very stiff and rigid and eyes open. And I love what they're kind of implying here: this idea of you know, th- these two things are not meshing. No. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's almost like Astro Boy is like saying, "I'm just going." Um, um, I needed an adult, someone <laughs> help. Um, <laughs> But but no, seriously, it's yeah. You're, you're right. He's like he's very stiff, and he's just kind of like <clears throat> he doesn't know. Uh, he, you know, a child, a, a, a normal human child, reacts to mm. the stimuli around and you know responds. You know, it's, it's you know like, oh, this person must be my mother, whatever. And mm-hmm. you know, there's the latching on to things. Astro Boy doesn't latch on to anything. Nope. He doesn't understand it at first, and it takes a while to 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 figure it out. Yeah, and um. You know, it's just, and then just to see Ten Mound standing here, just like, like, oh my boy, my pride and joy, and you're just like going, this, this is not going to end well. <laughs> no, this is this is not going to be what he hopes it to, to, to be. Mm-hmm. And it's just, I think it's just like really interesting. Like, and this is for the next 
a couple episodes mm. as well where you know there's this effort to get the story across mm-hmm. as quickly as possible and just to make you slam it into your head and get you to think about it so when they take time like this then that's mm-hmm. like a, a visual cue almost of going oh i need to pay attention and yep. to figure this out because everything else is going to move quickly yeah absolutely yeah it's very important um, which, which I mean, I, the whole thrust of the show is to get you know action boy adventure. <laughs> it's right. like, I uh, I can totally appreciate getting to the action boy adventure part, but man, there's so much story that's yeah. just in these first three episodes. Yeah, you could have done seasons on that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh, because mm. Doctor Tenma has a lot of bats in his belfry <laughs> yeah so yeah. it'd be some interesting backstory with him you know mm-hmm. how did you create the brain for a robot boy mm-hmm. you know what i mean it's like we don't have that, yeah. that, that detail we just see the schematics of it it's like well yeah you can take an erector set and build a crane yeah. but it doesn't make it able to be like father i love mm-hmm. you oh what's going on? you know it's like mm, give me backstory on that i know you can't do it yeah you know. um one of the most brilliant things about the 2003 adaptation of Astro Boy is it begins with Dr. Ochirimatsu, Dr. Elephant, in this version, yeah. bringing Astro to life. Oh. And you're like, wait, wait, where's Tenma? What's what's going on? And the, like they, they explain what's going on, like why this is happening. Like there's a whole other backstory oh. that they kind of bring in. I'm like, well done, because, you know, playing with audience expectations. Yeah. Um, and then it allows them over 50 episodes you know, to tell all that backstory. Yeah, because there's um, a lot. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. Um, uh, so go back to the breakfast scene. Oh yeah. Real, real quick. So this scene, <laughs> I, yeah. I, I, you know, I laughed too, but then I thought, of for, I thought mm-hmm. about it for a second. So he eats the donut that presumably his father makes. Mm-hmm. He eats the donut, opens up the panel, and he pulls the donut out puts it back on the plate. But the way he does it is to make sure that his father doesn't see it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's like kind of like the foreshadowing of, yep. well, he knows he's different mm-hmm. and he's trying to hide something, but you know, mm-hmm. what, what is it? Is, you know, and then, you know, of yep. course, later on. Although I guess I would freak out too if I would looked over and I saw a child like just go, <laughs> here you go. <laughs> you know. Well, and it's that expression on his face of like regret. Yeah. Like yeah. he can't taste it. Like he he knows he's lying to his father. Oh yes, it tasted yeah. great. Well, he doesn't know. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, yeah. He's um, an advanced uh, android, but he's not that advanced, <laughs> right? <laughs> um, yeah. And then we get the whole sequence of of this. And and here's where I think of him playing and so forth. And here's where again I I think this, this is where Tezuka and his crew are like, no, 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 we're artists. <laughs> we're, we're we're going to you know find ways to make this visually interesting. I love the idea that they, they have this spinning night and day cycle Yeah, that we, we see and it just gets faster and faster and faster and faster as Astro is just you know, sitting there playing with the, the plane and just goes over and over and over and over and over again. You look at, oh, oh, right. Like this is these endless days. He can do this forever. Yep. Really clever. Um, and then we get this weird one, this weird thing. So, in the various versions of Astro Boy, this has been handled, I will say, better. Yeah. <laughs> and it's handled here. Yeah. And I was like, well, why haven't you grown? And yeah. And that's like you when built you built him, you <laughs> maniac. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oversight. Um, but, but you know, but yeah, again, you're just like, you want to look at Tenma and just go, you, you should have known. Because if you didn't yeah. build in the capacity for him to grow, he's not going to grow. Yeah. And it's just exactly. kind of like, well, okay, you want him to be a boy and you want him to be become a man to take over your legacy, I suppose. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. But you didn't yeah. take that yeah. into effect. So, you know, so here you have him kind of <laughs> going crazy. And yeah. you're just like, but, but how did you not know? Yeah. <laughs> It's it's very strange that the the thing I like about the the way the manga handled this, and again, and to be clear, like in the original version of the manga, like this is basically how it goes. And then Tezuka went back and you know in later revisions, later releases of Astro, kind of redrew it and refined this over time. Um, the the way he eventually handled it is that um, 
Tenma realizes that Astro can never think like a human. Um, that the way he, like, you know, they ask him in, in the manga, you know, they, they, well, they, they do the, the drawing here, you know, draw a flower and he draws a molecular composition of it. Yeah. It's like, yeah, he just, he, he doesn't understand beauty. That's just not something that kind of computes for Astro Boy. And so Tezuka kind of has the, the 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 psychotic break off of that. This feels a little just bizarre and forced. Yeah. I wonder if it's just kind of also kind of a joke that they're throwing in that the, 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 the kids would laugh that Tenma feels this way. I don't know. I mean, it is funny to see him. He keeps trying to measure Astro Boy, <laughs> so that that's amusing. But it, yeah. you know, maybe you're right. Maybe this aims for kids to be amused, but for the adults to be like, wow. Dr. Well, Ten yeah, because Dr. Tenma is a horrible human being. Yeah. Well, yeah, I was gonna say because like he's just like, can't you? Don't you love me? Can't you grow for me? Mm. You know, it's just kind of like, um, yeah, that's uh, wow, that's that's <laughs> harsh. I mean, how? Do, I mean, it's kind of like saying to your kid, "Can't you throw a fastball? Why don't you love me? Throw a fastball." You know, it's just like, uh, which in fairness is kind of the metaphor. Yeah, yeah. you know. Um, if you love me, you'd win. That. What? <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Um, and again, more of the, the, the <laughs> background there, we see him being measured as in no background. There's yeah. Just, <laughs> yeah. Nothing. You got a shadow. Yeah. And only, and the shadow is only the platform that Astro is on. That's true. Dr. Yeah. Tenma is not throwing <laughs> any shadow. Yep. The actual post to go up and down doesn't throw a shadow. Mm -hmm. Just that little slice of the actual platform shadows. Yep. I was like, boy, that's real limited. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They they, they, they didn't uh, they didn't have time, uh, clearly. Um, in fact, this whole sequence, it's um, you know, it's all, all gray, just, you know, all gray backgrounds. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, yes, yeah, so and eventually he gets sold off to the circus. Um, and again, I, I think I got another. Just yeah. you go bananas and you sell your robo son, mm -hmm. you sell him. <laughs> like, yeah, well, and not God. only do you sell him, like, I would mm -hmm. not that I would do this, but <laughs> if it were me and I, you know, wanted to sell the thing, then I would sell it to like you know, another nation, a corporation, mm -hmm. or something. They sold it to. This guy. <laughs> How about misappropriation of state property? <laughs> right. This is the scientific <clears throat> institute that, like, you know, Dr. Tenma has gotten every scientist and all of this stuff to develop Astro. And then he sells the product. I'm like, what mm -hmm. madness is this? Yeah. <laughs> like, other than his, you know, Tenma's, you know, crazy. Um, but, yeah, but other than that, it's just like, I'm going to, you know, build the world's most advanced tank you know, machine uh, thing. And then I'm, I'm just going to sell it out from under the army. Like, gosh, that. <laughs> it's almost like um, Japanese politicians and business interests uh, mm. would do something kind of like this at some points. I, I don't know. Yeah. Just to say Maybe. It. Perhaps. Developing things like TVs and radios and then selling it out from underneath the, the mm. uh, research facility that was government owned. Mm. Maybe. Mm. Um, he gets the whole circus thing, um, and uh, um, uh, John in chat is correct. It's a very Pinocchio esque plot line yes. here. You know the toy he wants to a boy, all that kind of good stuff. Um, and then you get the uh, the fight with Astro, and I, I will give them this: like this, this was a pretty well animated fight. Yes, um, given everything. Yeah. Um, there's some really cool stuff here with this kind of uh, bull robot. Uh, fighting Astro. Yeah, um, their their mechanical design team was just terrible. I didn't believe that bull robot at all. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just awful. Um, and uh, of course, Astro refuses to to destroy him because robots. Understandable. Um, and here's where we get to see um, Professor Elephant in the English dub, Professor Okinomatsu in the yeah. original Japanese, um, protest the the cruel treatment here but he still um, bought a ticket didn't he hmm? still, yeah <laughs> absolutely i mean hmm. you know, i'm sure that ticket uh talked all about astro boy being here uh -huh. um but i i do appreciate in here the whole idea that um the professor gets ticked off and then he realizes he can't do anything he has to leave 
Um, you know, there's no big dramatic rescue here. He's like, well, you kind of got me dead to rights legally. I kind of have to live with this for now. Yeah. It sucks. Um, uh, let's see here. Um, and yeah, it's a, it's a really sad part. <laughs> As Astro is basically enslaved by a circus owner. Yep. Of course, to fight his own, his own kind. Um, and then finds all of the robots that have been left behind and that are going to be scrapped because they weren't useful anymore. It's like, jeez, Tezuka, chill. Yeah, they, they did a, I, I thought, for the budget again. They did a really fine job when you had Astro right. sitting on this on his crate. Yeah. That his just dejected look was yeah. it, it was so it was so well communicated. Mm -hmm. And you know, in this instance where the backgrounds are so simple and they're grays and dark and everything yeah. else like that, it's like this was film noir in like yes. you know the juxtaposition of light and shadow. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, damn, you guys were, you know, <laughs> that's a Knowing your limitations, and then also knowing the 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 functionality of that kind of artistic presentation, mm -hmm. it yeah. shows much more for the creative usage than it is mm -hmm. to just neatly excuse it as they just didn't have the money. It's like, yeah, they didn't, but they were not sacrificing the art. Mm -hmm. And it's like oh, that's, that's that's really cool. I kind of really mm -hmm. appreciate that. And especially because, like, on the one hand. These were images that everyone assumed would disappear forever. It would get broadcast once. Yeah. And no one would ever see it again because that's what television was like in the 60s. Um, and so on the one hand, and this is, I think, endemic to anime as a medium, this idea that regardless of that, we're going to make sure that we figure out how to use the medium to its, its, its greatest effect. Those scenes where it doesn't matter, we don't need the backgrounds. That's fine. As long as it gets to where we need to be. And then here in this moment, we make sure we, we communicate what we need to. Uh, it's really cool. Um, uh, and so we get the whole circus sequence, which I thought was really fun. Uh, the long panning shot of all the robots walking past and all the weird little things they're doing. Again, very... Um, very uh, How the Grinch Stole Christmas yep. kind of um, oddity. Well, what was it from Rocky and Bullwinkle? Ace, uh, Ace oh, of yeah. Fables or whatever it is. Uh, where yeah, they have fractured fairy tales. Fractured fairy tales. Yeah. Where you get all the elephants and the guys <clears> walking <throat> by a little yeah. department of public works dude with his little cane. <laughs> <in the back. laughs> it's like, that's what reminded me of this. And I'm like, oh, here we go. Yeah, totally. Um, um, and so bad things happen. Astro and company have to save the day. Um, and again, another kind of, you know, in the midst of this natural disaster and all of this, you know, destruction and flames everywhere, we still get all of this comedy of yeah. all of the robots like picking up all the humans. Yeah. Um, At least they took the high, high road on that and didn't just like you see them throwing body parts in the bucket. Yeah, exactly. like, <laughs> oh, that's terrible. <laughs> At least they're entire people. That's a good thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, the asteroid again um, saves his quote unquote yeah, master, um, but runs out of power in doing so. And, for, and again, to your point, John, like how much they're packing into this episode yeah. of plot. The fact that we saw earlier that, that Astro shared his power with the other robots so they would be able to, 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 to move. And now he's in crisis because he can't, because he's out of power. Um, he's able to, to, um, when he was sharing his power, I swore he said, "Well, I've got twelve volts. I've got more than enough." Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I thought twelve volts. volts. <laughs> Good night, kid. What? I mean, the future must be amazing. Would they need like one eighth of a watt or something yeah. like that? Yeah. So twelve volts is more than enough to do it. I'm like, yeah. Oh, crap. Yeah, that must have been a you know misdub or something. Yeah. Well, well, you know, it's what they thought that the year 2000 would be. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 37 years later, of course, 12 volts would be able to power anything. <laughs> An entire city. Oh, okay. It's not the voltage, it's the amps. <clears throat> oh, I got you. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it ends with 
the announcement that robots uh, cannot be owned and thus Astro is free and decides to go off with the professor. Um, so when this little sequence happened, yeah, and you know, the 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 um circus owner learns that there has been a public outcry and robots mm -hmm. have done their thing to gain their freedom. Mm -hmm. Did this not remind you or uh, of uh, Metropolis, the anime? Oh wow, yeah. Because you call. know, in that story, yeah. they you know the the robots mm -hmm. are also kind of wanting you know they're mm -hmm. very much segregated from society, and there's there's mm -hmm. you know places they can't go and things they can't yeah. do and stuff like yeah. that. And so this is the germ of the idea, I guess. But mm -hmm. um, but to have this and then just to turn it around and just kind of go, well, you know, Skynet is here now, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, no but uh but you know to have that and then to you know wrap this up in a nice little bow mm -hmm. because you know you really did present early on you know the idea of well you know he is a product and he is legally mm -hmm. not a thing like a in a, a, a he's not sentient but he's not, but he's not recognized as a sentient yeah. being so now he is mm -hmm. and he's free yeah i wonder if tezuka was concerned that kids wouldn't quite understand all the ramifications of this. And so he kind of rushed through this at the yeah. very end. Yeah, because I think we know there's a whole lot that could have gone into like, <laughs> yeah. how do robots yeah. get rights? Okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, those are things that crop up again and again and again. Like, you know, time of Eve. Yeah. You know right. I mean, androids, do they, are they a thing? Uh, beatless. You know, mm. are these sentient. Uh, portable server systems mm -hmm. are they are they people mm -hmm. um vivi fluorite just a couple seasons mm -hmm. ago same kind of thing it's like you know where where do you draw the line what is what is what is the the quintessential right to be your own thing versus yeah. being a an object i'm like mm -hmm. oh so mm, it's cropping up quite early yes <laughs> absolutely um this this show does a lot <laughs> Yeah. And this is episode one. one. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Like, geez. Well we've we've come so far that now one fight in uh Dragon Ball can take like <laughs> eight episodes. <laughs> and here we have everything in one episode. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. There we go. Um and and uh and Astro uh, gets his freedom. Um you also have to wonder, like we were saying before, you know, the fans now, and, and to Edman's point, um, there hadn't been an origin story for Astro up to this point in the manga. So this is kind of a fan's chance to see that. But I think they all kind of knew where this was going. Um, so it's kind of interesting how we'll, we... This could be one of those things where they're like, okay, and, and done. Like, we're, we're just going to kind of elide all of the ramifications of this and just uh, get to the end. Or it could just be left, they're like, um... We're done. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, we just we just uh, drew twenty three and twenty three minutes and forty eight seconds of animation. Time to wrap things up. Yes. Well, did Tezuka ever? I I wonder. Think about going back to like arc off. So arc off the discussion of like how did robots get rights? Who was the mm. forefront of this? Mm. How does that you know segue into? Astro's experience so that we mm. see you know that you can bring it up to right. a point where it's like hey turn the TV on robots have rights mm -hmm. and it's like I'm gonna guess that probably he wasn't gonna work work on an arc mm. like that or yeah. who knows you know what I mean it's like well <clears throat> when he when he died he <clears throat> is reputed to have said to ask God for just a little bit more time yeah to continue mm -hmm. to draw because he had so many, I, I mean, he, there's a reason why he's the, like, you know, the, the father of manga, because he's just everything. He did everything. He, you know, he did so many different stories. And I think that, you know, he probably just kind of had to edit his own brain and just kind of go, yeah. you know, okay, I have all these ideas that I want to get out there. And, you know, keep in mind that he was trained as a doctor, medical doctor. By yeah. Way. So, you know, he goes, I want to get all this out there. Am I going to worry about this? You know, like to your yeah. point, John, you know, am I going to write a story about that? Mm, no, I'm going to do this. I've got yeah. 60 other stories no, running in my, mind. in my yeah. mind. Yeah. Tezuka's complete oeuvre 
according to Wikipedia, includes over 700 volumes, oh. encompassing more than 150,000 pages. Yeah. Of manga. Well, damn. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I, I agree. I think that this is one of those things where it, it was like, you know, that is that is one of 8,000 ideas I have. Yeah. Uh, just, you know, never going to happen. It, well, it's one of the reasons why, like, um, Naoki Urasawa can come back and, and do Pluto and kind of redo the greatest, story on Earth, the greatest uh, robot on Earth storyline from Astro Boy because it was like, well, there's there's space. Like, yeah. there, there are all these sorts of stories you could tell with this and fill in details of what was happening with this detective and this side story um, because there's, you know, there's there's depth to to the story Yeah, in the world. Um, any other thoughts on episode one? Of Astro Boy, it was a lot. It was a lot, but it was really a, it was very yeah. effective for what it did. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you know the the sort of long story form that uh, you get out of 193 episodes, <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> All that listed, I'm like, oh, good night in the morning. You know, to that um, point, this could have very easily been One Piece. Yes, and so yep. far that you could have, he could have done said, okay, this is my thing. This is what I'm going to do, and just write a thousand, yeah, a thousand volumes. Mm -hmm. Well, as I say, if 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 Tezuka was is, if he had the mind to do mm -hmm. nothing but Astro Boy and every yeah. arc related to Astro Boy, yes. Um, mm -hmm. But you know, as you're saying, it's like he had so many ideas, so many yeah. thoughts that it's like to keep him on track to make. Astro Boy, the length of One Piece. Now you, you'd be asking a lot of him. <laughs> can, can you can you just imagine being his editor? Uh, oh God. <laughs> okay, so we're finishing up of Astro Boy uh, episode. Uh, okay, so I got this idea for the. Oh, oh Jesus, no! no please. Almost Tezuka. like uh, Focus. Focus. almost like somebody from Yai Publishing House who keeps adding yes. story details to his characters. <laughs> um, yeah, that must have been quite quite interesting to sort through as the mm -hmm. the publishing staff to be like okay we love your ideas tezuka we, we really do but let's focus on some of the ones that will actually like get people to buy them <laughs> yeah well, and, that was, and great like that was one of his things is that he was really good at figuring out what would sell um and saying okay i'm gonna you know here's an idea here's an idea um and he almost had kind of the the midas touch and obviously not everything was hugely successful but he was he was clever at, at figuring that out, but then also just figuring out how to do massive amounts at once. Yeah. Um, and in fairness, a lot of his manga was, you know, I'm going to draw the face and pass it off to my army of assistants to draw everything else on the on the in the panel. Um, but it worked. He was able to produce, you know, obviously insane amounts of material. Um, if you're interested, there's a book. The Osamu Tezuka story, which you can kind of see in red there, which is a manga adaptation of Tezuka's life. Uh, oh, done wow. by the Tezuka Institute, the Tezuka, whatever Tezuka's company is. Um, they commissioned artists to do it in kind of Tezuka style, which is kind of cool. Um, kind of all this. And, and there are some sequences in there of just this, this army of people in his thing. And there, there's like half a dozen editors standing off to the side, each waiting for a different story that Tezuka's working on. <laughs> All the attendants to the emperor. Yeah. yeah. Um, there's a, so I'm, I'm just reading Wikipedia on, on Tezuka because it's, it's kind of fun. Um, um, in January, 1965, to give you an idea of, of Tezuka, he received a letter from an American film director named Stanley Kubrick, mm. who had seen Astro Boy and wanted to invite Tezuka to be art director of his next movie, 2001, A Space Odyssey. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. Astro Boy is hell and murder. Yeah. <laughs> and you, know, you think about oh. it, it fits, right? <laughs> yeah. Like the themes are very much there. Um, oh, wow. Although flattered, Tezuka could not afford to leave his studio for a year to live in England and work on a movie. <laughs> you had to turn it off, to turn it down. Um, oh, wow. And just to tie it all together, he um, he did love the film and would play its soundtrack at maximum volume in, in his studio to keep him awake during long nights of work. 
Oh my Jeez. god. Yeah, I can just see that. Okay, 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 okay. Keep on going. I can get one more face done. Here, guys. 